Hello, and welcome to the ProjectWise Administrator Advanced Accreditation Course on Advanced Workflows. In this group of lessons, we are learning how to prepare a data source to support an advanced workflow. We continue to learn how to update an environment to support the advanced workflow. In the previous lesson, we got an overview of how document attributes can help track approvals. In this lesson, we will learn the foundational concepts needed to support your knowledge about automated document attributes. In the previous lesson, we got an overview of how document attributes can help track document approvals. As a document goes through the design review process, design review attributes are updated and cleared as needed. The process from work in progress to pending approval to approved can be repeated for each revision. So how do we create these smart attributes? Our example shows pick lists for the peer review attributes. The submitted, approved, and revised reject attributes seem to update automatically. Well, for the peer review attributes, we will populate the dropdown with values in a lookup table named PW user attributes. To update the submitted, approved, and rejection attributes, we will create update values using a stored procedure that return appropriate values such as a date or from the lookup table named PW user attributes. We will have the attributes update only when the corresponding trigger value changes. When we configure the rules engine in the next lessons, we will set the trigger values when appropriate to force updates on the corresponding attributes. So I just used three terms with which you may or may not be familiar. Before diving into the details of each QAQC attribute, let's review the foundational concepts that we will use, including lookup tables in the context of user information, stored procedures, and triggers. In the Enhanced Environments module, you learn that lookup tables can be configured by creating secondary environments. Each abstract document in the environment represents a row in the lookup table. For the QAQC information, we will utilize documents in an environment called lookup table PW user attributes. The environment's table name is lookup user attributes. We will use the PW full name and PW user initials columns from the lookup table to create the pick list for the design by, drawn by, and check by attributes by using a select statement. We will use a stored procedure to look up the current user's username to return the corresponding PWTB name to populate the submitted by, approved by, and revised rejected by attributes when applicable. A stored procedure is essentially a named SQL script that is stored in the database. It allows a user to execute a repeatable and lengthy set of SQL statements with a simple callout. The basic usage for a stored procedure is to use the execute command with the name of the stored procedure and any required parameters. For the QAQC attributes, we will utilize one stored procedure named ISO 19650 action names to populate the submitted by approved by, and revised rejected by attributes. The last foundational concept is triggers. A trigger is a project-wise environment attribute whose value change updates another attribute. For example, when the design by attribute is updated, the design by date is set to the current date. Let's dig into the ISO 19650 action name stored procedure. The stored procedure will return an update value to three attributes, submitted by, approved by, revised or rejected by. The goal of the stored procedure is to output one of the three formats into these attributes, user's title block name, user's initials, or three hyphens to show that the field is empty. The stored procedure requires that the lookup user attributes table 
is created and populated. To understand how the stored procedure works, let's look at an example for Viadotus as is submitted by role. The stored procedure uses three parameters. The first parameter is a username. When executing the stored procedure, we can grab the current ProjectWise user's username using a system variable $user.name$. Parameter 2 is the trigger value and will either be 1 or 0. If the trigger is set to a value other than 1, the output will simply be three hyphens to denote a blank value. When set to 1, information about the user is retrieved from the lookup table. Parameter 3 denotes type of information to return. It will either result in the title block name from the lookup table or the user's initials from the lookup table. If the return type is set to T, then the return value is the corresponding title block name of the user. If the return type is not set to T, then the return value is the corresponding initials of the user. When we execute the stored procedure, we have the username and can hard code the return type. However, we need a corresponding trigger attribute for each of the target attributes. Therefore, we will add three additional attributes to trigger the submitted by, approved by, and revised rejected by attributes to use with the ISO 19650 action names stored procedure. Let's look at the three attributes related to submitted by. To begin in ProjectWise Administrator, the update value for the submitted by attribute uses a stored procedure. In this case, the inputs are as follows. Username will be the current user. The trigger will be the current value of the trig submitted attribute. And the return type will be set to T. In addition, the field update is configured to only occur if the trig submitted attribute is changed. In ProjectWise Explorer, let's see how this looks. Let's change the value of trig submitted and see what happens. When we set the value of trig submitted to 1, the submitted by attribute will update to the user's title block name. When we set the value of trig submitted back to 0, the submitted by attribute will reset to dash dash dash. Congratulations! You should now have a firm knowledge foundation to configure document attributes that can track activity during the design review process. In the next lesson, we will use what we learned to configure document attributes to track approvals. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.